I try to show the good and bad points on vehicles that I talk about rather than just being totally biased. I obviously like BYD quite a bit. Uh, I think we can all agree, we can all agree, BYD do make pretty good well-made cars and it's a consistent theme now in the comments underneath uh, my videos but also other videos that I see uh, that almost everybody says that they love the quality or like the quality of uh, the interior, the build quality, uh, the paint, how they drive etc. So just talking about the pros of the BYD vehicle is actually a straightforward thing for, for me. So we'll start with the pros in a minute. Uh, but what about the cons? I don't think any of the negatives uh, on their own are serious enough to cancel an order. But uh, watch until the end, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, reading the comments is probably my favourite part um, of putting my videos onto YouTube. So uh, even though there are quite a few depressing comments, they generally don't affect me in any way, shape or form. I just love to see what people are thinking, good or bad, either's fine. Uh, so I know it sounds a bit cliche these days, but there are all sorts of comments and uh, really elaborate comments sometimes. It's really nice to read them. So if you're new to the channel, I'm Ben Alexander and I make EV news videos uh, from all over the world. So please remember to subscribe if you enjoy these sort of videos. I make them every day. Let's jump into it. The pros of the BYD seal. And this is not the hardest job in the world, like I've said, to write a list of pros for a car that is generally good. It's a good car. So in no particular order, there's no list like one, two, three, four, five here. It's just these are the points that I put down as the main pros. Uh, the fit and finish of the car, both inside and out, is absolutely where you want a car to be. A modern, nice car. It's basically perfect, in my opinion. And I've got pretty reasonable standards. Uh, it could have a Mercedes badge on it or Audi. And you would genuinely, you genuinely believe it is. Uh, so the paint is very consistent the whole way around, everywhere, all over the car. Really well done. Uh, the seat material, the plastics. When I say seat material, I mean the sort of like fake leather. The faux leather you know, that sort of stuff, and the plastics and the switches uh, and the way everything feels and looks and touches. Fantastic. Right where it should be, exactly as you want it to be. Uh, and you don't expect it on a car that's, you know, as cheap as it is. It's, it's just sort of above and better, I think, what people generally think. So uh, the design of the electronic components is fantastic. I've got a a bit of a background in electrics and component level repairs and building up electronics. So I can I can say the schematics and the actual components that they've actually used on the things you buy in BYD vehicles and their products generally all better than they need to actually be. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a conscious effort by the designers or the engineers, sorry, to make the electronics deal with hard conditions and probably to last the test of time, because that's actually the result of what they've done. Uh, it, will, it means that they will actually last. Uh, but I haven't found out how the main screen, the one that turns, is cool. That is a mystery. I've never taken one apart. I've never asked BYD, actually. I should probably ask them and let you know. I'd be interested. Uh, the way Tesla have done it, super interesting. Uh, Tesla had issues, obviously, like I've said before, with their screen in the middle, the big one, overheating and failing prematurely. And it was like, I don't know, a couple of thousand Aussie dollars or something. So 1100 US dollars, I think I heard it was once to replace that. Uh, so they now actually use the car air conditioning to cool down the screen, as well as the battery, the interior cabin, which is really, really fantastic. So they properly sold that. It actually uses the car air conditioning to cool the computer that runs a lot of the stuff inside the car, which I think is just a, a badass. Awesome. I love that. Uh, the batteries are pretty fantastic. Of course, this has to be said, and uh, very well cooled, thermally managed, very well thermally managed, super safe battery chemistry. LFP batteries are generally the best, uh, or the best choice, and it's my choice for a car that I would have. Uh, especially in 2023, if you're a person concerned with safety, then it would be LFP ke chemistry that you'd want instead of um, any, of the, any of the others, really, that we have on offer today. Uh, so BYD also offer 
I would argue, good capacity batteries on a standard on all of their cars, literally all of their cars. Uh, if you buy a BYD EV, then it will be able to do long trips of 300 kilometers or 400 kilometers, which is a long way. And I don't think we should underestimate just how far that is. Um, I'll be going to uh, South Australia soon, and I won't be doing more than 400 kilometers without stopping. And I know some people do, like my brother, He's pretty badass with his long driving stints, uh, but I get quite bored easily, and I like to eat and stretch my legs. So, uh, you know, I'm like an old man, really, I think, before my time. <laughs> so that explains why my friends are all uh, like 60 years old, basically. Uh, so even the BYD Seagull, that has a real range of about a few hundred kilometers if you get the cheap one, and that's only like 10,000 US dollars. That depends if you can buy it where you are or wherever you buy it. But generally, that's a cheap car, and they've still put a good proper battery in that. Um, I was reading one of your comments yesterday that sums up BYD for me. And here it is. I'll put it on screen for you now. I think that's just really well said, and it makes perfect sense what this, what this person said here. The warranty is pretty good, I think. It's eight years and six years for the battery, which is great. And I, I properly don't think you'll need to use your warranty for the battery. Um, at all. And I, I really don't think the service and the warranty fees are tragic, but some people complain about that as the issue. So depending on where you are, uh, the cost to maintain your warranty and keep it, you know, in good standing. Uh, but if you don't pay it, then you don't get to use the warranty, which I think is a bit of a pain. And I think you should still get a warranty for the products that you've bought, regardless uh, if you've been paying uh, for them to check the fluid levels and, and do a couple of things. Because if your battery breaks, and it's nothing to do with your battery, um, you know, I, I just think that's reasonable, and I think they should at least honour that. Um, a battery issue is nothing to do with service items. So why they would you know, entangle them is beyond me. Uh, the price has to be the last one, I think. It's noticeably cheaper here in Australia than it is in Europe. Uh, BYD cars are generally, genuinely, sorry, uh, genuinely a good price, uh, especially for what you get. This is, you know, common, commonly said, isn't it? Uh, so if you go and sit in the BYD seal and then think about the fact that you can drive it home for 50 grand Aussie dollars, that's pretty fantastic. And if you are a bit unsure, go and sit in one and then let me know because it, it's pretty compelling, I'll be honest. Uh, so now let's move on to the cons. Uh, I know it might it might seem a bit random, but it does bother me a lot that they bothered to prepare and then spray primer and then wait a few minutes and then spray colour on the back of the bonnet and then they stopped there and they didn't spray clear coat onto, uh, onto the colour to seal it up. And I think that's just a bit cheap. Uh, that's the sort of thing you might see on a Fiat. Uh, and it's, the, it's an anomaly as far as I can see. Although, literally, the rest of the paintwork is top-notch. It, it, it is an anomaly. It's just a strange, random thing that they've done that just looks blatant in your face. We've cheaped out in something. The rest of the car, awesome. That, a bit cheap. So BYD, I think that's a bit cheap. Don't be stingy. Uh, the service fees are a little bit steep, honestly. It is, you know, we're talking hundreds of dollars. It's a lot of money. But just to keep your warranty, I think that is a bit, ugh, you know. I've had people comment about that, saying that they've actually cancelled their orders because of that, and it's a rip-off. So, you know, peep, it's hit or miss. Some people are fine with it. I'm not, like, I'm not shocked by it majorly, but some people are really against paying it. A few buttons inside the cabin, namely down here where they go up and down like this. I took some uh, footage the other day, and I'll put that on screen for you. Uh, I can't help but think about the paint on that, on those buttons, is it just ordinarily, you know, is it just paint? Is it just going to rub off after five years? I have no idea, and I'm really keen to know. And is the screen properly called? That I would argue is a con. I want to know, and I've not seen anybody tear one apart yet. So if anybody, if anybody has any idea about that, let me know. I'm really keen to know. And uh, because we're in Brisbane here, so they are going to have a very hard life and it's not going to be cheap, and it's not going to be a quick fix. It's not the sort of thing you can rock up to your BYD shop and have them switch over within a week. Uh, you know, it's just not. So uh, the BYD seal offers, I think, a good balance of 
price, performance, and design, and the aesthetics of it, the way it looks. Uh, certain aspects like charging speed and driver assistance features could be slightly better, but you know, you'd be paying for that if they did. And you know, 150 kilowatt DC charging is, is quick. So I don't think it's that bad, but I think they could have made it a bit better, but it's fine. And also BYD have a good charge curve. So I'm not that concerned about that at all. It's just a thing I've heard a few people say. Uh, the level of brand awareness could also affect people's decision to buy it from you used in a few years time, possibly, especially in a market that's dominated like Europe by EV brands like Tesla and Volkswagen and Audi and Mercedes. You know, there are lots to choose from. Not in Australia, but in, in Europe, there's a fair bit to choose from. And they're a lot more common there than they are here. So I think that might be a little bit of a thing to think about, depending on where you're watching this. Um, I can see that with uh, what everyone is saying in the groups online all over Facebook and uh, websites too, uh, in the comments section, ba basically anywhere, uh, whenever people are talking in a public space about this car, uh, it's good. It's a good deal. It's definitely competitive at the very least. And uh, I've genuinely considered getting one, but I'm not sure if I'll stay, uh, sadly, here in Australia or go back to Europe. Obviously, people know that I'm quite fond of Europe and that's where I'm from. Uh, I do want to check out uh, South Australia on the trip over uh, the next few weeks and then you never know I might possibly really like it in South Australia because it seems a, a place that doesn't get talked about very much. Uh, much of Victoria is quite nice, the Alpine region stunning, really lovely apart from the crazy, if you, you'll know what I mean if you've been on the Omeo Highway in Victoria the windy road like this it goes on for hours and it's it's it was it's an awful experience pretty but an all it just goes on it's like a hellishly long road that goes like this for like three or four hours it's really crazy but there are some stunning places in the uh maybe you say the o the omeo region in the alpine area of southeast victoria super super nice place uh but i'm just a little bit put off of moving to victoria period because of the way that things were dealt with in this last few years uh, you know, Melbourne, and just Victoria. So I think there is more to like or love about the Seal than there is to dislike about it. And it's an awesome car for the money, especially if you get the cheapest one, uh, you know, rear-wheel drive, uh, $50,000. Proper range, you can do several, several hundred kilometers in it, and you could drive it for the next 10 years, smash in 200 kilometers, 200,000 kilometers under its belt, and move it on 10 years time and get a new EV. That's the way I would be looking at this sort of purchase and I think uh, that makes financial se financial sense to do something like that instead of just two or three years. Keep it for five or ten years, you know. I'll put up here at the end uh, one of my latest videos which is a close-up walk around of the BYD seal that gives you an idea of the quality you can expect. And I've shot it in 4K, tried to go really close. So even to me, it's surprising just how good it is, even though I knew it was really, really nice before I'd even seen one in person. Uh, so thank you very much for watching until the end. And uh, remember to subscribe for more videos. I make them every day, literally every day. Occasionally I miss a day. Uh, thank you to the people that support on Patreon or YouTube memberships. I recently made a new really cheap tier for $1.49 Australian dollars as well uh, on YouTube memberships. So if you wanted to support the work that I do, you can look on there. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day and uh, thank you for watching till the very end.